Today, I also had to replace the valve cover gasket on the 93 to 97 Toyota FZJ80 Land Cruiser. This also applies to the 96 97 Lexus LX450, which also has the 1FZFE 4.5 liter inline six engine. Before I begin, I've already ordered a new valve cover gasket. Here's the part number, 11213-66021. And I'll also list these in the description so you can just copy and paste. And I also need six of these spark plug gaskets. Ignore that quantity, 10. And I'll also need a new throttle body gasket. Might as well replace with a new one so there's no leaks. And if you look at the front of the head, there's half moon cutouts with sealing around them. Well, here's what they should look like underneath all that oil from the leaking valve cover gasket. I have a tube of Toyota uh, form in place gasket so I can reseal those as well. This valve cover gasket has been leaking for some time now, especially here toward the back of the head. Before I pull this valve cover off, I'm gonna clean this with engine degreaser to make this job a lot less messy. I'm also replacing every coolant hose on the engine. So this is the ideal time to replace the valve cover. Since I'll already have the throttle body off to replace two small coolant hoses that attach to the underside. Stay tuned for the full video on how to replace every coolant hose, including the pesky heater hose or PHH, as Kenneth would say. First, I need to remove this rubber intake tube. And these clamps are held tight with 10 millimeter bolts that also have a Phillips head on them. I need some room to slide this off now. So the air box lid has to come off. Depending on the year of your 80, it may not have the pair system for emissions like my 94 does. Pull the intake hose very carefully because they do get brittle with age. You can see somebody tried to pry it from the throttle body with what looks like a flathead at some point and it just chipped off. There's another one back there. Be careful with these guys. Now I have all these vacuum lines to disconnect. There's five on the top there and a couple of sensors to unplug here. These rubber lines were probably more flexible many years ago, so I had to be very careful disconnecting them to avoid cracking them. Lightly gripping them with pliers and giving them a twist helped break them free from the nipple. There were two more small lines in the back that I forgot to show earlier. I'll get this big one in a minute. All four are disconnected up there, and now I can see one bolt there and the other lower bolt there. I'll need a long extension for those. After loosening the lower bolts, I carefully removed them with a magnet so they wouldn't fall. Then remove the two upper bolts and put a towel over the valve cover to avoid scratches from the throttle body. Now, go down under the intake. This is a lot easier to show on this imported right-hand drive. And over here on the right, is the pesky heater hose that I just replaced. I'll have a, another video with that. This hose right here is attached to the bottom of the throttle body. First, I'm gonna grab that clamp and rotate it clockwise a little bit. Then I'll be able to get some pliers on it. These needle nose were long enough to grip the clamp and I was able to grab it just enough to loosen it a little, to rotate it clockwise or I can grab it with some bigger pliers and pull it off. Then I was able to pull the hose from the head. The other hose clamp I need to remove is right here. Then I was able to remove the throttle body. Then the 10 millimeter bolts on the spark plug covers and a couple more 10 millimeter bolts holding the plug wires. Next, I loosened all the 10 millimeter bolts around the valve cover including the two in the back, which I needed a swivel extension to reach. There's 13 total. I had to rotate this hose clamp for more room to remove the valve cover. I let the bolts soak in mineral spirits thinner to clean them up. 
Here's a universal seal puller. This usually works great for pulling out spark plug gaskets. Just put the end under one edge and pry. Oh man, these things are crispy. Yeah, look how brittle these are. And my 80 only has about 95,000 miles. So yours might be even more brittle than these. See if they're all that bad. Yep. So if you don't have a seal puller and you don't want to go out and buy one, you can also use a big flathead and a hammer. But instead of tapping them out, they're just shattering because they're so brittle. All right, we're gonna have to do some surgery. Let me get these hoses out of the way first. I actually cracked this one a little bit. It was so brittle. Now I can flip the valve cover over. And there's not enough left to grab onto to pry these out. Every one of these plug gaskets shattered like this. So what should be a 10 minute job is now gonna be a 30 minute job. By the way, here is one of the new ones and they go in like this. So you won't see the stripe when they're installed. I have a pick tool here. It's small enough that I can get it between the gasket and the valve cover and I'm prying the gasket up just a little bit and once it moves up just a tiny bit I can pry it with a paint can opener well maybe not this one was exceptionally difficult I threw everything at it that I had and it finally came out well hopefully the other five aren't that bad let's try this guy down here make a tiny bit of room underneath with the pick and then pry with the can opener. All right, it's moving. Just keep going around the perimeter and prying up. And eventually it pops out. That was much better. The other four spark plug gaskets weren't as difficult as the first one, but still put up a good fight. On the last couple, I did find that once I had them started, I was able to pry them out with the seal puller and save some time compared to going all the way around the seal with the can opener. Now to install the new gaskets. I put some blocks of wood under the valve cover. Remember, this is the side that's going to face up as I drive them in. So I have a 34 millimeter socket here and it's about the perfect size to use as a driver for these spark plug gaskets. And the wood blocks are under here so those nipples on the top don't get damaged since it's on a metal workbench. Set that guy in place, socket Nice and centered. Check my progress here. A little higher on the right side. And I can feel with my fingernail, I have a tiny more to go. Feels flush and no more gap. One down, five to go. Now it's time to replace the valve cover gasket. And I'll put this part number in the description as well. Pull out the old stiff rubber gasket with the help of a small flathead and clean any leftover dirt or oil out of the groove where the new gasket will sit. Next, I wiped any dirt or oil from the mounting surface on the perimeter of the cylinder head. After the initial cleaning, I wiped the surface down again 
with prep spray degreaser. Right now, while the valve cover is off, is the ideal time to reseal these half moon cutouts. I have some Craftsman Robo Grips with the plastic caps on the end. These won't gouge up the aluminum. Just give it a wiggle and there she goes. Ah shoot, the Robo Grips don't fit. I'm just gonna be real careful with some channel locks here. Now I need to clean this up and get all the old sealant out of there. I just used my fingernail and an old towel to scrape off all the old sealant. Then, once it was all removed, I cleaned the surface with some prep spray. Then I did the same for the aluminum half moons. Here's the FIPG by Toyota. I love that it comes with this little key tool to roll the tube. This is the same FIPG I used on the transmission pan when I uh, replaced the solenoids on this 80. Just put a nice even coat on here. It doesn't need to be super thick, just cover the whole edge. Then do the same on the half moon. Make sure the whole mounting surface is covered. And press it in place. And there you go. I leave that little extra bit that oozed out on the top. I looked at my chain guides earlier, but now's a good time to check yours if you have high miles. This one has about 96,000 miles uh, being imported from Japan. Basically just getting broken in. I'll be driving this until my kids put me in a nursing home. Everything else looks good in here. All the mounting surfaces are clean. It's time to install the valve cover. I'm tightening the valve cover bolts down in a crisscross pattern. I couldn't find the exact torque specs on these in the service manual. But valve cover bolts usually aren't much. I'm only snugging them down with a quarter inch ratchet using only my thumb and index finger. Now on to the throttle body. First, I removed the old gasket, cleaned the mounting surface, and installed the new gasket. Then I cleaned the throttle body and installed a new coolant hose on the backside. and the new coolant hose on the front side. I'll have those part numbers in the description. Then I reinstalled the plug wires and I got the throttle body in place, connected the front coolant hose and reinstalled the four mounting bolts torqued to 15 pound feet. Reconnected the vacuum lines, plugged in the sensors, reinstalled the wire covers and the intake tube, airflow meter and air box lid and the last two vacuum lines on the valve cover. Don't forget to go down here again and clamp the bypass hose onto the nipple on the head. And I took this ground wire off for more room to work, so I need to bolt it back on to the intake manifold. And done! I'm also replacing every coolant hose on this engine, so stay tuned for that video. Consider subscribing for more how-to videos and project vehicle updates here at the 6th Gear Garage. Thanks for watching. Hey, there's a link to my store in the description where you'll find all kinds of rad Yoda merchandise like shirts, hoodies, posters, phone cases, and a lot more. Thanks to everyone out there who supports the channel. It really means a lot to me to see people wearing something I designed.